Alrighty, in this video we're going to go over how to construct a confidence interval when you know the population standard deviation and the sample size is greater than or equal to 30. So here are the steps. Uh, right here I have the confidence interval for a population mean and E right here is the margin of error. The formula for the margin of error is right here. And the probability of your population mean being in this interval is the confidence level that you're given. So the first thing that we're going to do is verify the population standard deviation is known. And that either the population is normally distributed or the sample size is greater than 30. The next step is you're going to find the sample mean and note the sample size. From there, we're going to find the critical value, ZC. Now that's going to correspond with the confidence level that you're given. I have another video on how to do exactly that. And then we're going to calculate the margin of error. And then finally, we're going to use this formula to calculate the confidence interval. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to construct a confidence interval two different ways. The first way, by doing it by hand with the formulas given. And the other way is using the graphing calculator and their stat features. So in this example, I have a sample of 40 employees and I mark down how many hours they worked in that week. So for example, this person worked 30 hours, this person worked 26, 33, 26, and so on. And I want to construct a 95% confidence interval. So the first thing we have to do is know, is the population standard deviation known? And in the example shown right now, it is not known, so I'm going to have to tell it to you. And most textbooks, when you're doing the homework, uh, in a section like this, will have to give you the population standard deviation. Otherwise, you're going to use a, uh, a different technique in a different section. And then we have to check the sample size. Since I don't know if the population is normally distributed, I have to check if the sample size is bigger than 30, which it is, because it's 40. Now for part two, I have to write down the sample statistics. So I need to know the sample mean, and I need to know the sample size, which I already know the sample size is 40. Now for the sample mean, I'm going to have to add up all of those data values, and then divide by the total, which is n. So that's going to be 30 plus 26 plus 33, 26, and so on, all the way to that last number of 27, and then divide by 40. When I do that, I'm going to get a mean of 29.6. Now, how else could you do that? Well, you can go into your graphing calculator and you can create a list where you put all the numbers in. Uh, I'm actually going to show that to you in the second half of this video when we use the graphing calculator. Uh, but you're going to put it in and you can have the graphing calculator calculate the mean. Part three, we got to find the critical value. So the confidence level that I'm given is 0.95. Uh, now this is one of those very common ones and so you'll have to know that the critical value is 1.96. So you can check on a previous video where I show you how to find the critical value C given a confidence interval. Uh, but real quickly, what you would do is you would draw a normal curve. You would mark down two endpoints where you have your critical values. You know the center is the confidence level that's given, 0.95, which makes this 0 0.025 and this one. So what you do is you just note that these two areas have to add up to 5% and then just cut it in half. And then you go into the normal table, you find the area for 0 0.025, which you can see right here, and that has a z-value of negative 1.96. So I'll put that down here. All right, next we're going to calculate the margin of error. Now the formula for the margin of error was the critical value times the population standard deviation divided by the square root of your sample size. So that's 1.96, 7.9 divided by the square root of 40. And when you multiply and divide all that together, we get 2.4. All righty. 
move that up. And then lastly, to get the confidence interval, we use this formula. Number in the center right here is the population mean, which we are trying to estimate with this interval. And we have, so we have 29.6 for the mean minus the margin of error. And then the mean plus the margin of error. And that gives us 27.2 to 32.0. Now I rounded to one decimal place here, and that's because I rounded my mean to one decimal place. Uh, the graphing calculator will probably round to two or three decimal places. So visually what's happening here is on a number line, we have the population mean, which again, I don't know what it is, uh, but I do know, but I just calculated that there is a 95% chance that my population mean is in this interval somewhere. Again, the center of this is the sample mean. Let's go ahead and see how to do this with the graphing calculator. So in this example, we had a large data set of numbers, and we can calculate the confidence interval using the graphing calculator two different ways. The first way is to go to stats, edit, and then enter in the data that we were given. All right, there we go. Now that I have it entered in, I can go back to the main screen. I can press stats and then scroll over to tests and then scroll down to Z interval. So it's gonna calculate a confidence interval. Now it says Z because we're gonna be using a normal table to calculate the critical value. Press enter. And then here you have an option between data and stats. So if you don't know the mean and you just had the large data set, you can actually just tell it to go use the data, use the list. We didn't have a frequency, so just list one. We'll just put the number one there. And we had a population standard deviation of 7.9. And we had a confidence level of 0.95. So we'll calculate. And there you go, that's our confidence interval. It matches what we had. So it says that we are 95% confident that the population mean of hours worked is between 27.152 to 32.048. Now the other way that I was saying was when you go to tests, go back to Z interval, you can choose stats. Now all it's gonna ask you for is the mean the population standard deviation and the sample size. So if you already knew the mean and the sample size, you could have just entered it in here instead of having to enter in all the data into the graphing calculator. Uh, but either way, when I calculate, I should get the same answer.